So today I would like to talk about, first of all, how I am so sorry that I missed this past Friday, but that was my hurricane last week and I should be doing consistently and if I have something else like that, I will try to tell you. And then um, the thing I wanted to talk about today was, it's kind of like a continuation if you saw my other video on love is not self-seeking. Today is more like love is not self-seeking, but it is sacrifice. And I wanted to tell you this cool story about this old Cuban man that happened to me about, well actually I made it happen and it was about two weeks ago. It was not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before that. And so, um, so I, I'll just start telling you. So there was this, um, so two Sundays ago, we were just going about a normal day, my mom, my dad, and I. We came home to our property, and I was walking my cat Penny, and we were trying to figure out where to go, what to do, and I was like so bored because I want to get, I want to get valuable things done. It's hard for me to not have anything to do, which I always want to have nothing to do because I'm so busy all the time. And I think people think like they want to have like nothing to do and like look so forward to when they're retired because then they have nothing to do and they don't have to work. But what I don't think they realize is that it's not fun to do nothing all the time. Of course it's nice to relax, but anyways, when I, I, I always want some downtime, but then when I do, I'm like, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? <laughs> and so it's not like anxious, but you just like, I had this empty feeling inside all day, this like just kind of loneliness, just not very happy and so and that is from the devil anyways to go back to the story i took penny and we decided to go to las palmas for dinner which is in downtown mount dora if you've ever been there it is so good if you've never been there it's so good it's this cuban restaurant um las palmas and they have fajitas there and stuff anyways every time my dad and i go in there sometimes <clears throat> on on in evenings to get dinner and usually when we go in there, there's this, or I think every time we go in there, there's this old man who sits behind the door when you come in. And when you come in, he opens it for you. And then when you leave, he opens it for you. And he's always sitting there and he's always opening doors for people, opening and closing and opening and closing. And I, every time we've gone in there, I look at him and I go, See, that, I hope that old man gets paid a lot of money or that's a, I guess that's his job. It looks kind of, looks kind of sad. He, he like has nothing to do. And every time we go in there, I say that type of stuff and I feel bad for him. And that's with my dad and I. Well, this time my mom, my dad and I went in. And sure enough, he's there. He opens the door for us. We walk and we get seated. And um, I'm looking over at him again. And I don't think my mom knew about him, so I go, Mommy, well, we see that old old man over there? And she's like, yeah, I'm like, he always, he's always sitting there and opening doors for people, and I think it's his job. And she's like, oh, really? And I said, yeah. And I said, I, I feel bad for him. It's like he, that's, that's his job. It just made me feel bad. That's his job, and he's like alone all day long. And so then I, I was saying that. As I was saying that, I was like, you feel so bad for him. I looked away. Oh no, because <laughs> I had just gotten this compassion for him. Oh, please, God, God given compassion. What am I supposed to do with that? Act on it, of course. I'm not supposed to have this compassion and then be like, oh, I have God given compassion for you. I hope you don't go to hell. I wish you knew Jesus loved you. Faith without works is dead. Ah, oh, I didn't want to go tell him Jesus loved him. I didn't want to go pray for him but i had this compassion for him thinking having this realization wow he what if he's going to hell he seemed like he seemed so innocent such a sweet old man looking out the window just staring out the window not having a pity party or anything but just staring out the window nothing to do and he he looked kind of sad and and i was like what if what if he went to hell because I refuse to act on compassion that God gave me towards him. And I was like, so the whole me, I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> uh, 
uh, but I wasn't laughing at all. I was not laughing at all. And my mom's sitting right next to me, and I was doing that a lot of the meal, and she's like, all right, well, why don't we just go and rip the Band-Aid off and get get it over with? I'm like, no, 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 no let's just wait till, let's just wait till we're finished with our food, and then I can go. And so, so, so we were like talking about it the whole meal. My dad's across from me, and my mom's right here. I'm like, I just want to, she's like, well, what do you want to tell him? I'm like, I just, I just want him to know Jesus loves him, and I don't want him to go to hell. I just want to, I just don't want him to go to hell. And that's, that was my whole main point. I just don't want him to go to hell. And I've talked about before how scary hell is. It's forever, and there's no second chance. It is so scary. And seeing what a sweet man he is, I didn't want to pass off that opportunity to get him into the eternal, into eternal heaven instead of eternal hell. So, finally, we got dessert, we got a cappuccino, the whole meal, I was like, <laughs> anyways, uh, you, you get it, I was doing that the whole meal. And so, um, my dad went to the bathroom, and he came back, and we saw him talking to the old Cuban man over there, and then he came back, and he goes, I was talking to him, and he, he didn't understand me. He doesn't speak English. And I was like, um. <laughs> and my mom was like, babe, don't worry about it. You're going to, you, you, doesn't matter. You do it no matter what, and forget you heard that. It's not <laughs> Anyways, he, he didn't realize, but he, he, he just, the fact that he doesn't speak English, now I have to go tell him Jesus loves him, but he doesn't speak English, and now I'm going to go pray for him, but he's not going to understand a word I said. Ah, oh, so much worse. <laughs> but, but um, anyways, I got up, we were leaving, my mom and I got up, and we went over, I, I think my dad was at the door, but anyways, we went over, started walking over, and I was talking to her like, uh, uh, yeah, and so, um, so I'm in his thing over there in the corner, and I ended up walking right past him, because I was stalling so much, I go over to the side, and I'm like, oh, look, I dropped my necklace, oops, uh, and so finally, so finally, I just, okay, she's just like, get it over with, and I'm like, okay, so I go, I'm like, excuse me, hi, um, and he looks at me, and he's like, and I'm like, um, I was just wondering if, you had anything you wanted me to pray about, um, and he, and, and if you did, I'll, I'll pray for you. And he was looking at me, and he goes, and I was like, oh, I, I, I thought, I thought he was hard-hearted or something, and so I was like, I just, I just wanted to tell you um, that Jesus loves you, and if there's anything you wanted me to pray for you, for I will. And he still didn't understand. He was. He, he was like going like this and like this <laughs> and, and then my mom came over and she's like she just wanted to tell you that Jesus loves you and he still didn't understand and so finally he goes and he, he was sitting down and he got up and he goes he pointed to the people on the front booth like where you get seated and so and I was like oh <laughs> I didn't do that but that's what I was like having oh Oh, uh, inside. And so they came over and they and they're like, What's going on here? They literally said that. And I'm like, oh. Because now there's this whole scene in the restaurant. Three of them like came out and he, he told them to go get an interpreter. So they brought an interpreter from the back and she stood there and she wanted to know what I like wanted to tell him. And so I go, I just wanted to tell him that Jesus loves him and she told him that and then he, he looked at me and he went Oh, like that, and then, and then she said, and then I said, and that if there's anything he wanted me to pray for him for, that I will. And she told him that, and he goes, oh, oh, and then he told her what he, he said, yes, and she told me he said yes, and I was like, okay, is, is there anything in particular he would like me to pray for him for? And she told him that, and then he goes, and he was, I, he was speaking in Spanish to her, and then, um, she told me that back, and she said that he had, he was sick, his throat hurt, or something like that. And so I was like, okay, okay, so I'll pray. And I folded my hands, and I went, and he closed his eyes, and I went, 
Dear Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for our sins and for our sicknesses. Thank you for carrying them upon you so that we wouldn't have to bear them. Thank you that they're not ours to bear. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I command every, every part of sickness in his whole entire body to be healed. Right now, in the name of Jesus. And then I said, and thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so, and that obviously wasn't word for word, but my mom said it was annoying. And afterwards, anyways, um, he, when I was done praying for him, I said, amen. And he looked up at me, and he went, he went, like, he he was like, his eyes, he was looking at me like he didn't want me to go away. He was like confused at the love I just showed him. Like, did, and, and I was like, <laughs> he was like thanking me. And I was like, we'll be back. You're welcome or whatever. We'll be back again. And so we left and oh my goodness, I left that place and I felt like a million dollars. And even everybody in the whole restaurant witnessed it too. So I was um, accidentally um, having an influence of Jesus upon their lives too. Even though I was originally going after the old Cuban man. And the funny thing is, um, when, uh, oh, sometimes when the devil makes it seem like, oh, this is just worth it, this is not worth it. This is like, okay, he doesn't speak English. He's not gonna understand this. Just hope he understands and leave the building. That is like literally what I was thinking. And I'm like, oh, because you know, I wanted it to be over and so, ended up he wanted an interpreter he felt like there was something there he needed to hear so he got up he got them to go get an interpreter and bring him back so he could hear what I had to say because it was like his spirit wanted it he knew he, I had something to say that he wanted to hear and the way he looked at me afterwards was like like I feel I, I think he must have felt some type of manifestation in his body like he must have felt a, a, a burning feeling in his throat or something like that that proved to him that Jesus is real because the way he looked at me was like awestruck like you've seen a ghost or you've seen an angel and um, I felt so good afterwards I was just not, my mom was like good job bug <laughs> and my dad was like that was great and stuff and um, so I was so when you when you do something like that or you have compassion for somebody and you don't act upon it, or you feel like you're supposed to do something and then you don't act upon it, if that's ever happened to you before, you know how terrible that feels. And you're like, you just missed out. You just disobeyed the God of the universe. And um, I have done that before. And um, this time it was, it's, it's so hard to overcome fear, man, I know. It's just like, you don't, you don't, it's embarrassing what if he doesn't understand you what are they going to think of you what if he, what if they're stubborn what if they um are like adamant like really hard-hearted and don't want anything to do with it what if they put their hand up to you and but what if they accept it either way it's our job if we've been given compassion it's our job to act upon it whether or not they <laughs> go to hell or heaven we did our job and we planted that seed if they go to hell, that's their fault because we did our part. There's a Bible verse that says something like, if there is an evil man and you don't, you refuse to warn him from his ways, he's going to hell, but his blood will I require on your hands. And then it says, but if there's a wicked man and you do warn him from his ways and he goes to hell, he's going to hell, but you will be not redeemed, just he will not require his blood. Your, his blood will not be required on your hands because you planted that seed and you did your part and it's his individual responsibility if he wants to accept that or not. But you can't control that, you just do your part if he accepts it or not, that's his problem. But it is your problem if God gives you God-given compassion or God gives you love for somebody and you know you're supposed to act on it, but you 
don't, then it's your fault. Obviously, everybody's responsible for their own uh, for their own actions, but if you don't show somebody the way, show somebody the light, show somebody Jesus, then it's also his blood is required on your hands because you didn't show him the light. And so I felt so good afterwards. I just felt that he loved it. He took it in and he wasn't hard hearted. It's not going to be like that every time, I know, but it was just so great. It felt so good. One of the best things that's ever happened to me, the look in his eyes. <laughs> and um, you would think I was talking about a boy or something, but his look in his eyes. No, I'm talking about an old Cuban man. <laughs> and so um, the other day, we're going down here a little bit with the good news. The other day, I, at, at Universal, um, like a week later, which because it was this past Sunday, no Sunday we just had, I went to Universal with my dad and I had the best day at Universal. Anyways, we were coming back from City Walk and we were, uh, we were coming back from Universal and at the very end of the park when we were about to go into City Walk, we saw this little boy about eight, nine in a wheelchair bouncing a basketball and pushing himself and bouncing a basketball following his dad. And um, and I was watching him for a little while, and I was talking about him, talking about how he shouldn't have to do that. That's it's it looks tiring. And my dad would respond, and I'm like, he's he's really good at it. And my dad would say, I'm like, yeah, but he he should be able to run around and play with him, not have to sit in a wheelchair and. And so, we were walking behind him, we were walking behind him for a long time. He was in front of us for a long time. And all of a sudden I realized, oh my goodness, I should pray for him. So, I felt really bad for him, I had compassion on him. And I wasn't trying to get this God-given compassion, but God gave it to me. It, that's like, what love, you don't take it, um, it's given. Anyways got this God give, given compassion for him. And I was like, oh, it's an even worse situation because I didn't have a lot of time to make up my mind whether or not I was gonna do it, whether it was from God or whether it wasn't, even though I did in my heart know that that God given compassion was from God. That compassion was from God. And he was walking with his family and they were, he got tired and they he was holding their arms to pull him along. We were getting to the point where he, we were gonna lose him in the crowd and I was like, I feel like I should pray for him. and. And I ended up that I was just in the crowd, that we were walking in the crowd. I'm not making excuses, it's just with fear of man. It's, it's hard, I know it's hard. We were walking in the crowd, I didn't have a lot of time to make a decision. And so, looking behind my shoulder, passed by, I didn't pray for him. And oh, the heaviness afterwards. I was like, I could have healed him, I could have planted a seed in his life. I, what I wanted to tell him then was that he, God doesn't want him to be in a wheelchair and that God wants him to be healed. That's what I wanted to tell him and I wanted to pray for him, whether or not they received it or not. I mean, I wouldn't pray for them if they didn't want me to, I'm just saying. I would ask them and tell them that it's not God's will for him to be in a wheelchair, whether they wanted me to pray or not. And so um, we ended up Going out to the parking lot, I saw him once again after we lost him. I was like, oh my goodness, I really need to go and need to chase after him. I still didn't. And the whole ride home, I was feeling terrible because I knew I disobeyed the God of the universe, my creator, my savior, who died for me. And that is not a good feeling, especially when you know that you may have saved a little boy in a wheelchair's um, you may have gotten him out of the wheelchair, or you may have um, indirectly gotten him out of the wheelchair. Of course, Jesus did it, but. So, we have a positive story and a negative story. The old Cuban man. I obeyed God, and I changed his life. I probably, I believe I saved him from hell that day and gave him love that he's never felt before. He's never been given before, which is Jesus' love. The negative story, I disobeyed God. I didn't go pray for the boy. I didn't go tell him that it's not God's will for him to be healed. And you know, God's not gonna punish 
people that we, God's not going to punish people because we didn't do our part. He, I prayed that he would send somebody else into that little boy's life to do my part, which I refused to do. And God will do that. He's a merciful God. But my point is, so after all that, we, it's fear of man is not worth it. Afterwards, I have on my phone in my notes crying emojis and like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to have fear of man. Just like, you should be, I should be able, we should be able, you should be able to do the most embarrassing thing in the world and not care because of what a revelation we have. And of course, the righteous man falls sometimes. So it's not like, Oh, I, I, I disobeyed God this one time and he's never going to use me again. That's what I was thinking. I mean, I just wanted him to use me because I failed him that one time. I still want him to use me. If you want him to use you, you, that's all it takes. Of course, you have to act upon that faith. But if you mess up, you just have to repent, say I'm sorry, move on. Oh, you'll get more opportunities and I know I will too. And so... <clears throat> You know how like the big um, preachers like Andrew Womack <laughs> and um, Kenneth Copeland and Jesse Duplantis, they have like all these interesting stories to tell and uh, all the wonderful feelings they've gotten from Jesus and being filled with the Holy Spirit and all these wonderful things that have happened to them and all the things they've done to heal people and save people and, and, um, and all these really interesting, cool stories that make their... Um, sermon so interesting and funny and fun to listen to well and have a lot of lessons in them well you think uh, and I used to be one of those people where you're sitting and you're like how do they I'm not resentful or anything it's just how do they get all these like stories and how come I don't have any like of course we all have stories but not like this it's just like how come I, I don't get these opportunities how, how or how come they have all these interesting information interesting stories to tell and i don't well i'll tell you why it's because they made it happen they didn't wait for it to happen they didn't expect it to happen they well they expected it to happen but they didn't expect it to happen and sit back and relax and enjoy the ride they expected it to happen and they made it happen they had faith and they acted upon their faith. They didn't just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. They said, no, I'm going after it. And that's why they have all these stories. All these stories they tell are not just like God favors them and he gives them all these stories to tell because he chose them and he didn't choose anyone else but these few people. He's chose, many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but, but few choose to follow God. Many are called. It is a matter of making it happen and not waiting for it to happen. It's not God's job to do the action. He'll give you the power and authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means will hurt you, but you have to make it happen because he gave us free will. He, he can't do it for you. He gave you the ability, but he can't make it happen for you. It's like you have food, but if you let it sit on the counter and rot, you're not going to reap the benefits and the nutrition of it. You have to make the food to put it in your body and give you the nutritional, what you need from it. You can't just let it sit on the counter, and that's what it is like with all the, he's given us powers to trample and serpents and scorpions to overcome all the power of the enemy. It's sitting on the counter. Are we going to use it, or are we going to let it sit there? And not use it because he's given it to us we just have to use it and so um, love is not self-seeking it is sacrifice it is a sacrifice of the screaming flesh to go up to somebody to go up to an old Cuban man who doesn't speak English and ask him if he wants prayer tell him Jesus loves him that is not fun to do and I'm not boasting about myself because I've not I don't do it right every time that's for sure but I'm just saying this one particular time when I did it right it's not easy but it is not worth it to let your flesh 
do what it wants and not go do the right thing. If you love somebody, you're not self-seeking, you're not worried about yourself, you're worried about them. You're not focused inward, you're focused outward. You can care less about yourself, you just care about them. It's just a narrow path to get to them, not like, what is everybody gonna think of me? That's fear of man, but if you're like, love is sacrifice, who cares about myself? Love is sacrifice, not love is self-seeking. What are they going to think about me? No, love is not self-seeking. Love is not wondering what people are going to think about you. It's wondering what people are going to think about somebody else, not what they're going to, but, but helping them. Not about helping yourself. It's about helping them. So love is sacrifice. Love is not self-seeking. Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross. He was not self-seeking himself. He came to this earth to sacrifice himself on the cross for us when we were sinners. Although we were still sinners, he died on the cross for us because he loved us. Not because we deserved it. Not because we were worthy of it. But because he loved us. We were so unworthy of that, but he died for us because he loved us. He sacrificed himself because he loved us. He was not seeking, he was not self-seeking. He sacrificed himself for us because he loved us. And that is the perfect and ultimate um, example of love. God is love, love is God. And um, so, this was a long video today, and if you watched the whole thing, glory, hallelujah, I hope it blessed you, and um, I'll see you next Friday, and um, yeah, alright, bye.